Viking Archery and the Viking Bow Welcome back to Archery Historian. This video discusses the Viking Bow and Viking Archery. The Norsemen had developed a unique self-bow of their own and put it to use in large-scale battles. A considerable amount of art, writing, and archaeological finds lead us to the conclusion that archery did in fact play an important role in Viking life. The Viking Bow was a self-bow, yet a horn bow like those of the Eurasian nomads was known to the Vikings. The Vikings swept outwards from their Scandinavian homelands in the 8th to 11th centuries AD. They were part of the last wave of pagan invaders to terrorize Christendom. The other pagan threats came from the Moors of North Africa and the Magyars from the east. Modern military history tends to focus on the melee combat prowess of the Vikings. Yet archery and the Viking bow, as we shall see, cannot be overlooked. The Viking bow in writings, the sagas. Sagas were poetic historical stories composed in Iceland mainly during the Middle Ages. Some notable mentions of Viking archery in the sagas are Njal's Saga Written in the 13th century AD, the Njal's Saga recounts events between 960 and 1020. The main character, a fierce warrior by the name of Gunnar Humandarsson, manages to hold off a numerically superior foe at his home. This is done primarily with the use of his bow and arrows. Olaf's Saga Olaf was a mighty king who was instrumental in bringing Christianity to Norway. His rise to power had concerned and angered many of his neighbors, who would become his enemies. An intriguing part of the saga details the fierce battle of Svolder. King Olaf is ambushed and outnumbered at sea by his rivals. He binds his eleven longships together, with his personal warship, the Long Serpent, in the center. The enemy ships, by most accounts, are about seventy in number. King Olaf fights valiantly, but the enemy is gradually taking his ships and making their way to the central vessel. One of Olaf's trusted men, Einar Eindridesen, Thambar Skelfer, is well known as an expert archer. He tries to pick off the high-ranking enemies on their ships with his mighty Viking bow. The enemy archers take notice and commence returning fire. While at full draw, Einar's bow is shot and it cracks into pieces. King Olaf then throws Einar his bow, but as Einar draws it, he is able to draw the arrowhead much farther back than the bow. No, not quite so much as that, says the king. Take my bow and shoot, flinging the bow to him. Einar took the bow and drew it over the head of the arrow. Too weak, too weak, said he, for the bow of a mighty king. And throwing the bow aside, he took sword and shield and fought valiantly. The Viking Bow and Composite Bows Although the Viking bows found in the archaeological record were self-bows made from a single stave of wood, other bows have been mentioned in literature. It seems as though the Vikings of the medieval age were quite familiar with composite bows. The Konungs Skugsa, a Norwegian text from around the year 1250, deals mainly with politics and philosophy. It was apparently written for the Norwegian king Magnus Le Gabote as part of his formal education. The book is divided into 70 chapters and three main sections. Chapter 38 is especially interesting as it pertains to our study of Viking archery. The chapter is titled Weapons of Offense and Defense, and it mentions the term hornbogey. It is described as a shorted bow that is ideal for mounted archery. The Vikings, being a seafaring people, with vast maritime trade routes and commercial connections with many merchants from mainland Eurasia, could have very easily come into contact with Asiatic composite bows of the steppe by the 13th century. Vikings' interest in commerce as well as warfare would have certainly drawn the attention of the Vikings if they were to be exposed to the composite bows of the steppe. The Viking Bow and the Law Icelandic legal texts give a common unit of measure as ordrag, which may be translated as bowshot. A later amendment to the Gragas, an Icelandic legal text compiled after the Norse period, describes an ordrag as roughly 200 Fadmar, about 480 meters. This is certainly at the limit 
of the distance of traditional bows, fortunately for the student of history and archery, there are some archaeological remnants of various bows discovered which we will discuss in the following section. The Viking Bow Unearthed Archaeology The Vikings had buried their dead with several artifacts, tools, and weaponry that give us a glimpse into the world of the feared Norsemen. Of particular interest are several bows that were found in former Viking lands or in lands where, where they frequently raided and or traded. The Viking Bow Ballandary Bow, Ireland The Irish had seen Viking raids in the 8th century that continued well into the 9th century AD. The site at Ballandary was excavated in 1932. The Ballandary Bow, as well as several other military artifacts including a sword, knives, and spearheads were recovered. The bow may be considered an early longbow, as it is made of yew, is approximately 190 centimeters long, and is made into a D cross-section. The Ballandary bow, like later English longbows, had a hard inner heartwood on the belly, with much more elastic sapwood on the back of the bow. The bow itself was nearly fully intact, with about 5 centimeters of material missing from one end. The fully intact end had a shallow 5 millimeter knock on one side of the bow. This is un an unusual feature with historical and traditional bows, which typically have symmetrical knocks on the bow ends. The Hedeby bow from Germany slash Denmark. An important Viking trading town located on the Jutland Peninsula. Hedeby or Hatabu in German preserved many artifacts from the height of the Viking Age. It was in fact the second largest city in the Viking Age and the oldest city in Denmark until it was ceded to Germany in 1864. Archaeological work on the site began in 1900. A museum was opened next to the site in 1985, which houses many interesting historical objects. These include day-to-day -day utensils like cookware and cutlery, as well as military hardware, which included axes, swords, spears, arrowheads, and the Hedeby bow. The Hedeby bow is made of yew with the classic D cross section and measures 191 centimeters in length. Both the Hedeby and Ballandary bow is made from yew. A small notch is cut into one side of the upper limb and a type of knot system was used to tie the string to the lower limb. The Viking Age Settlement at Burka in Sweden. This particular settlement was founded around the year 750 AD and was a very important trading town in Northern Europe. Traders from Byzantium and other Middle Eastern areas were known to have brought their wares to this area for sale. It is one of the earliest towns in Sweden. Of particular interest in the study of archery are those bone fragments and other archery related accessories that were found at the site. They were all related to archery and archery styles that were common on the Eurasian steppe, not, nor not Northern Europe. Several bone plates were unearthed that were used to reinforce composite wood horn sinew bows. The arrowheads discovered at the site also bear the distinctive shape of late Hunnic, Avar, and Magyar arrowheads. The archaeological evidence suggests that there may have been trading in arms between the Vikings of the north and the riders of the steppes. The Viking Bow in Art and Illustrations some medieval artwork depicting the Vikings and their descendants in action with their bows and arrows can give us a clue on the shape and features of the Viking bow. The Viking bow and the Bayeux Tapestry, Battle of Hastings. When William, Duke of Normandy, crossed the English Channel in 1066 to contend for the English throne, he was accompanied by many archers. The Bayeux Tapestry, which depicts the events of 1064 to 1066, including the Battle of Hastings, shows William's archers in action. Their bows bear a great resemblance to the bows unearthed by archaeologists at a later time. Characters from Norse mythology who are associated with archery. Ulr. Ulr is the Norse god of archery, hunting, and skiing. He is considered to be an expert archer and is often depicted with a bow and arrow. Skadi. Skadi is a goddess of winter and the hunt in Norse mythology. She is also associated with archery and is sometimes depicted with a bow and arrow. Odin Odin the Allfather of Norse mythology is not specifically associated with archery, 
but he is sometimes depicted as a skilled archer. In some legends, Odin is said to have used a bow made from the wood of Yggdrasil, the world tree. Egil Egil is a legendary archer in Norse mythology. He was said to be able to shoot an arrow through an apple while riding on horseback, and his skill with the bow was unmatched. Want to dive deeper into Viking archery and the Viking bow? We would highly recommend you check out Dan Hoyt's book, Bows and Arrows of the Vikings. It is a thorough examination of the Viking bow and Viking archery. Dan has many years of experience in constructing Viking bows and put in his good work and time into the topic. The work is extensive with over 200 pages, over 250 illustrations and over 60 photographs. Some of the topics covered include how to make your own bow and arrows in the Viking style, contemporary illustrations, archaeological finds, Nordic wood bows, Viking bow accessories, shooting a long bow, safety precautions, shield shooting experiments.